the curse of the royal family of Mysuru is an argument without an end. In the princely milieus of Mysuru stands the baronial city palace, home to the Wudiyar dynasty descendants. The Amba Vilas Palace till date reigns as the face of Mysuru. Between the swish flourishes and urban charm, there is a preserved regal air bottled up for posterity. Spread over an area of 72 acres, the vaulted structure is located in the heart of Mysuru city facing the Chamundi hills on the east. King Yaduraya is said to have constructed a wooden palace in the old fort area at the dawn of his rule. Struck by lightning, this structure was replaced by yet another wooden but elaborate castle by the then Maharaja Kantirava Narasa Raja Wudiyar. The palace was taken over by Tipu Sultan and he built it again. He held it on till his death in 1799 after which it went back to the Maharaja Krishna Raja Wudiyar too. The Mysuru Palace faced another calamity in 1897 in the form of a kitchen fire during the wedding of Princess Jayalakshmi. Almost the whole structure was destroyed. Maharaja Krishna Raja Wudiyar 4 and his wife maharani kempanan jammani devi shifted to the nearby jaganmohan palace and commissioned a new abode through a british architect henry erwin the present day mysore palace also known as amba vilas palace was rebuilt in 1912 for a sum of rupees 42 lakhs with a more belligerent indo saracenic style the main complex is a three story formation in grey granite with five contrasting deep pink marble domes the palace grounds are home to over 12 temples three gates and a five story watch tower with a gold plated dome the five story central tower of height measuring 145 foot is topped by a metal gilded dome borrowed from the persian style the impressive arched facade has a huge sculpture of goddess Gajalakshmi in the center with her elephants to symbolize wealth and prosperity. The palace has two ceremonial meeting halls namely the Darbar Hall and the Amba Vilas Hall. The columns of the Darbar Hall are painted such that they create an illusion of endless corridors. The Amba Vilas Hall is a beautifully designed hall used for a public audience. It has the golden throne of Mysore made of 85 kilograms of gold. The marriage hall or the Kalyana Mantapa is composed of delicate stained glass ceilings that are filled with the colors of peacock feathers and pretty flowers. The entire ceiling was made in Scotland and brought here. Hanging from the ceiling is a stunning chandelier that offsets the green iron pillars. around the octagonal mantapa the floor of the eight cornered hall is made of these colorful mosaics with a eight star forming the center of the pavilion perhaps interestingly in 2016 kalyana mantapa was the undisputable chosen venue for the nuptials of the 27th scion of the wadiyar dynasty and trishika kumari singh of the dungarpur royal family when the five day long wedding was announced naturally hysteria ensued as mysore was about to witness a royal wedding after 40 years it has been four decades since mysore grounded to a halt amid the mayhem and excitement of a royal wedding it was an extraordinary melange of tradition and royalty of centuries of history and of the moment flourishes where alongside 40 royal families of india in attendance were several indian aristocrats prime minister narendra modi indian president pranab mukherjee and foreign diplomats when yaduvir a graduate in arts from boston's massachusetts was adopted by pramoda devi the widow of the previous king of mysore Srikant Datta Narasimha Raja Maharani many saw in it an embodiment of a curse that has plagued the royal family since the 17th century legend has it 
that there is a curse on 400 year old wodiyar dynasty they won't be blessed with natural heirs the curse dates back to 1612 when wodiyars conquered the region and alamelamma the wife of the ailing king tirumala rajas who ruled the powerful vijayanagar empire ran away with all the royal ornaments to talakad a small town along the kaveri river soldiers of the king chased her to get back the jewels but alamelamma jumped into the river cursing the wodiyars may talakadu be filled with sand and become a barren land may malangi that stretch of the river turn into a whirlpool may the wodiyars never have children she said history lays evidence that none of the kings have given birth to their heirs always adopting them from within the extended family six rulers since the 17th century in all have been adopted sons people can say it is because of the curse or not but the history is true that cannot be denied hearing queen alamelamma's death raja wadiyar was repenting and hence he had an idol of queen alamelamma made in gold placed in the mysore palace and worshiped her as a deity hence mysore dasara festivities are essentially grand and inside the palace a formal puja of queen alamelamma is done for this very reason but breaking the myth a prince was born to the wodiyars on december 6 2017 in bengaluru this is the first baby to be born in the family after 54 years and people are hoping that this newborn will end 400 year old curse with curses a lot is subjective to a great extent it is something people like to talk about just for the sake of intrigue the young king dismisses the curse saying the doctrine of lapse enforced by lord delhousie during the british rule is one reason why this myth or legend has persisted many other princely families started emphasizing on some sort of curse to ensure that adoption would continue their family line deeply traditional yet endlessly intriguing the mysore palace is a world heritage site and one of those destinations that ends up on every traveler's bucket list at some point probably the gordian's knot has been disentangled with the birth of the prince and the curse has been put to rest we all can echo the sentiments of napoleon bonaparte what is history but a fable agreed upon